Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on probability using algebra. Now this topic reminds me of a famous quote Einstein was reported saying. I spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem and 5 minutes on the solution. Now this is not something that we can take literally given the times of our exam but these wise words state how important it is to understand the question and the problem and pull out as much information from the question to help us. Many students come away from tricky questions saying I don't know what the question wanted. So I hope this tutorial will help you unpick the question or problem when looking at probability in algebra. So what we're going to do is look at some general guidance to help you tackle these tricky questions. But in order to do this there has to be prerequisite knowledge. And to do this tutorial, it's important that you know the AND or OR rule, you know how to simplify algebraic fractions or algebraic expressions, and you know how to solve algebraic fractions, equations or quadratic equations. So let's have a look at these tough probability questions using algebra. Here it says Pippa has a box containing N pens. There are only black pens and red pens in the box. Now the number of black pens in the box is 3 more than the number of red pens and Pippa's going to take at random 2 pens from the box. Now we know the probability that she'll take a black pen followed by a red pen is 9 over 35 and we're asked to find the possible values of n. Now reading the question it's important to understand what the question wants us to find out. Here it wants us to find n where n is the total number of pens, black pens and red pens. So what I'm going to do is set x to be the number of black pens and given that I know the number of black pens in the box is 3 more than the number of red pens, therefore the number of red pens is x minus 3. Notice how I'm continuously using x. Now I can work out n. Well I know n is the total number of pens so it's the sum of black and red pens. So therefore I know n to be 2x minus 3, the sum of x and x minus 3. One important piece of information from this question is the fact that Pippa is going to take at random two pens from the box. This means we have dependent events. One event directly impacts the probability of another event. So let's see if we can form our equation using our AND or OR rule. Well we know the probability that she takes a black pen followed by a red pen is 9 over 35. So I'm illustrating the probability of a black and red equals 9 over 35. Now let's substitute our terms. Well we know the probability of black is x over 2x minus 3. This is the probability of a black pen being taken first. AND means times and the probability of a red pen, well we know that's x minus 3 over, remember the total number was originally 2x minus 3 but because one pen is removed therefore we have one less pen. So that means the total number of pens in the second removal is 2x minus 4. All I've done here is simply form an equation. Here represents the probability of black, x over our 2x minus 3, and is multiply, and here represents the probability of a red, x minus 3 over the 2x minus 4. Now we're using our skills on simplifying and solving algebraic fractions. So multiplying out, this means we have x times x is x squared, x times minus 3 is our minus 3x. Multiplying our denominators, well 2x times 2x is our 4x squared, 2x times our minus 4 is minus 8x, minus 3 times our 2x is minus 6x, and minus 3 times our minus 4 is our plus 12. It still equals our 9 over 35. Simplifying that denominator a little bit more by collecting our like terms gives me x squared minus 3x all over our 4x squared minus 14x plus our 12, still equaling our 9 over 35. So here I'm going to simply cross multiply. 
35 multiplied by the x squared minus 3x is here. And 4x squared minus the 14x plus 12 multiplied by the 9 is here. Expanding out gives me 35x squared plus 105x equals our 36x squared plus our 126x plus 108. Now we're going to continue to collect all our like terms so we form our quadratic. We've subtracted 35x squared from both sides and we've subtracted 105x from both sides, giving us a quadratic equating to zero. Now we're using our knowledge on solving quadratics. You can solve this in a number of ways. For me, I find it easier to factorise. Two factors of 108, which sum to be minus 21, is minus 9 and minus 12. So now I've factorised, I can simply solve for x, giving me x is equal to 9 or x is equal to 12. But remember, the question wants us to calculate n. We know n is 2x minus 3. So therefore, 9 and 12 gives me two possible values. n can be 15 or n can be 21. These are tough questions, but the process is generally the same. Identify your unknown correctly depending upon the question. Always read the question and highlight if it's dependent events or independent events. And remember how important it is to have that prerequisite knowledge of the AND or OR rule, knowing how to simplify algebraic fractions and expressions, as well as knowing how to solve algebraic fractions, equations or quadratic equations. So let's move on to the second exam question. Here the question states that there are only green pens and blue pens in a box. There are more blue pens than green pens in the box. And we also know there are more than 12 pens in the box. Now Simon's going to take at random two pens from the box. And we know that the probability that Simon will take two pens of the same colour is 27 over 55 and we're asked to work out the number of green pens. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. Remember to form your algebraic expressions, use that AND or OR rule, as well as using your skills in simplifying and solving algebraic fractions or equations. Now reading this question, hopefully you've identified an unknown to be green pens. Here I've used X, but you can use any letter. Now given that we know X is green pens, and we know there are three more blue pens than green pens in the box, we know X plus three represents the blue pens. We also know the total number of pens is the sum of green pens and blue pens. So it's two X plus three represents the total pens. Now reading the question, we also recognise that Simon is going to take at random two pens from the box. So therefore we know the events are dependent. So let's see if we can form our equation. Now we know that the probability that Simon will take two pens of the same colour is 27 over 55. Well, we know the instances where they're the same colour is when it's green green or blue blue. And we know that equals our 27 over 55. Now remember our AND or OR rule. AND is times and OR is add. The probability of a green and green or blue and blue is represented here. The probability of a green is x over our 2x plus 3 multiplied, because it's AND, x minus 1 over 2x plus 2. This is because green and now we have one less green, so it's x minus 1, 2x plus 3, but then we have one less pen, so now it's 2x plus 2. Or, so we've identified this with a plus, we could have a blue and a blue. Well, the probability of a blue being selected first is x plus 3 over our 2x plus 3. And... Now, if one blue has already been selected, then we know we have x plus 2 blue pens left over 
Well, originally it was 2x plus 3, but we're one pen less, so it's 2x plus 2. This is a difficult equation to form. So writing this part down will really help you structure your working out. The probability of a green and green or blue and blue. So now let's use our skills on algebraic fractions. Well, we know when we multiply our fractions, we multiply our numerators. So I've simplified it here and simplified it here. So now let's expand. Well, x times x is our x squared. x times minus 1 is minus x. Add, multiplying out our two brackets, x times x is x squared. x times x times 3 is our 3x. x times 2 is our 2x. And we have our 6 over. Because we have a common denominator, I've made my denominator the same. Simply expanding, 2x times 2x is our 4x squared. 2x times our 2 is our 4x. 3 times our 2x is our 6x. And 3 times our 2 is our 6, which is still 27 over 55. Now let's see if we can collect all our like terms to give us 2x squared plus 4x plus 6, over our 4x squared plus 10x plus 6. One nice little trick when looking at algebraic fractions is to take out a common factor. Here I can see each term is even. So I'm going to simply divide each term by 2 to give me x squared plus 2x plus 3 over 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. You don't have to do this, but it's a nice little trick so you don't end up with big numbers. Now I'm going to cross multiply, multiplying by my 55 and multiplying by my 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 gives me this equation. Expanding each term out gives me 55x squared plus 110x plus 165 equals 54x squared add 135x and my 81. Subtracting my 54x squared from both sides, my 135x from both sides and my 81, I end up with a beautiful simple quadratic equation to be solved. You can solve it in a number of different ways, but for me, I find it easier to factorise. Now factorising allows me to get my solutions for x to be 4, and to be 21. So now I know x can be 4 or 21. Now I'm crossing out 4 because I know the total number of pens in the box has to be greater than 12. And if I were to substitute 4 into the expression for the total number of pens, my total number of pens would be 11. So therefore I know the number of green pens must be 21. So let's have a look at our last and probably hardest question. Here the question states there are only red, yellow and blue counters in a bag. Kevin takes at random a counter from the bag and he puts the counter back in the bag. Lethina takes at random a counter from the bag and then she puts the counter back in the bag. The probability that both counters are red or that both counters are yellow is 13 over 36. We also know the probability that the first counter is red and the second counter is not red is one quarter. Now Seb is going to take at random a counter from the bag and we're asked to work out the probability that Seb takes a yellow counter. Now there's lots of elements to this question but the process is still the same. Identify your unknown, remember to read the question and identify if we have dependent or independent events. From here, use your skills on the and or or rule, simplifying and solving. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. Hopefully reading the question you've identified that we have independent events because he puts the counters back in the bag and she puts the counters back in the bag. So that makes writing the probabilities a little bit easier. Also remember the question wants you to calculate probability. So therefore when you're forming your expressions you want to write it in terms of a probability. 
So I've written x to be the probability of red counters. I've written y to the be the probability of yellow counters and z to be the probability of blue counters. From this sentence we know the probability of a red and red or yellow and yellow is 13 over 36. Now let's substitute our expressions. Well, I know the probability of a red and a red is x times x. Remember, x represents the probability of a red being selected and we have independent events. Or, which is add, yellow and yellow are represented as y times y. And that still equals our 13 over 36. Simplifying gives us x squared plus y squared equals 13 over 36. Now I can't solve anything from here, but I do have an equation. So let's see if we can use this part of our question to form another equation. Well, I know the probability of a red and not red is given to be one quarter. The probability of a red is x and not red would be one minus x. Notice how I formed an equation with my same x term. From here, I'm going to simply expand to give me x minus x squared is equal to one quarter. I'm going to multiply by four now, just to make it a little bit easier for me. So therefore I have four x minus our four x squared equals one. And then rearranging to make my quadratic equal to zero, I have four x squared minus our four x plus one as my quadratic. And solving this, I'm going to factorize. And in factorizing, I've identified my solution of x to be one half. So therefore, I know the probability of red being one half. Now remember, we know from before, x squared plus y squared is 13 over 36. Well, I know x is one half. So substituting this back in, I have one quarter, which is a half squared, add y squared equals 13 over 36. Rearranging to make y squared the subject, 13 over 36 minus a quarter gives me y squared to be 1 ninth. To work out y, I simply square root. So therefore I know y is equal to 1 third. Given the question wants me to work out the probability of a yellow counter, I know the probability of a yellow counter is 1 over 3. So, in summary, when tackling questions involving probability and algebra, always read the question and identify your unknowns according to what the question wants. From here, try and be consistent with your unknowns, so it'll be easier for you to form the equations and solve. And remember, it's really important to have that prerequisite knowledge on being able to solve algebraic fractions or quadratic equations. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next video.